Froggy. Frog vid. Frog. I guess it means I probably have to put this hat on. Anyway, good time of the day to you boys, girls, NBs, LGBT community, and of course, people that listen to Mitski. Uh, the primary reason I'm making this video is because I got a lot of questions on the care guide that I posted about frogs, and also because that video kind of like took off on my channel uh, and I didn't really expect it to. And as some lovely concerned citizens have put it, there's a little bit of misinformation in the video. So I kind of just want to address that, clear some things up, and also just answer the most like asked questions about tree frogs there on the video. So that's the point of this video. If you're new to the channel, I would highly encourage you to subscribe. If you're not new to the channel, I want to extend my greatest of gratitude and say thank you for getting me to over 800 subscribers. Anyway, I'm just gonna go over some of the main questions that were posed on the, the comments of that frog video and answer them. And please, if you have any more comments, questions, or criticisms, put them on this video and maybe I'll do a follow up and mine that for free content. All right, first question. Quick question, is it possible to feed them solely with mealworms? My parents may have issues with crickets. Uh, yes and no, I mean, variation is, is good. You probably shouldn't just be feeding your frogs mealworms. I primarily feed my frogs mealworms and I haven't noticed too much of an issue, but also I mix in crickets and dubia roaches occasionally. You can get by with never feeding your frogs crickets because like, like I sympathize with your parents, crickets are literally the worst. Um, but the more variation you put in their diet, the better. Dubia roaches are not smelly, they don't make noise, and they're not as prone to escaping as crickets are. So if you can get by with having dubias, that would be awesome. Question number two. So I was at PetSmart getting a setup for my new dumpy and they insisted a crested gecko would be all right to add in. The gecko was about three inches long and the dumpy was around the same size. I asked if the frog would eat the gecko and the sales associate said no. After two days, the gecko went missing and it turns out the dumpy ate the baby gecko. I've never encountered this before where like a Petco or PetSmart whatever person was like insisting that you get an additional animal. It just seems like really dirty salesmanship. Pet sales in general are just very, very strange. I can make a whole video on that, but I'm probably not going to. This looks like a wizard hat. Skedaddle, skedaddle. Anyway, yeah, you don't want to cohabitate your dumpy tree frogs with anything else other than a dumpy tree frog that is about the same size. Even if you cohab like a large dumpy and a small dumpy, there's still a pretty high chance that the larger one is going to consume the smaller one. So no matter what a Petco associate tells you, just don't cohabitate. It's, it's a very bad idea. I applied numerous times to work as a, uh, work as a reptile specialist at PetSmart and I got turned down numerous times. After having gone back to that specific PetSmart, I get asked for advice all the time by the reptile specialist and every time I give the manager the side eye. Granted, I'm much happier with my current occupational status than I would have been working at PetSmart, but you know, an 18 year old can dream. Question number three. Hello, hi. I had a question about where you can purchase hides and interior things. I plan on getting frogs soon and was just wondering. I answered this in the video. But it's okay, I'll provide a, a more, a, a better response here. I'm sorry, Ashley, this this beanie is is quite large. Like it looks like a wizard hat on me or, or, a, or, a, or, or something very phallic. <laughs> What it's, is that? It's it's something all right. It's like a, a penis. I bet it's, it's a, a penis. It's a penis. Uh, anyway, there's a few different answers for where you can purchase like in like interior decorations for your frogs. The the easiest place is just Petco, PetSmart. I understand if you don't want to support the chains, but if you have literally no other options, then there's not much else you can do other than to buy, you know, stuff from them. You know, don't blame the consumer for having to seed to a world in which buying from exploitive companies is basically like something you have to do in order to carry out the things that you like. Otherwise, if you don't want to shop at Petco, PetSmart, you don't have any of them near you, surely Amazon and eBay, you can just pretty much look up basically whatever decoration you want. And Amazon has a pretty wide selection for some pretty manageable prices. But I think the best place to buy these decorations from are ideally reptile stores or hobby shops, like that kind of stuff. Or you can get creative, you can get fake plants at craft stores, you can get like logs and, and stones from outside, as long as it's appropriately treated. As long as it's appropriately treated, don't come at me, single-issue froggers. We'll talk about that later. But yeah, you got lots of different options. 
Question number, do you know what kind of light I can use for my frog? This is something that I sort of incorrectly addressed in my frog care video. Since these guys are nocturnal, they don't require any special lighting. Although a standard LED light bulb can be used for viewing during the day. But if you want to provide your frog with like a photo period, then having like a UVB is, has been proven to be beneficial. I responded to this person and basically told them, oh, you don't like 100% need a heat light. And they had a follow up. Well, I have to use a light because we already bought one when I got her but the bulb wasn't warm enough and the heat pads near me are too expensive so a warming light is more available to me. Heat pads are, are not very expensive. You can get one that is a suitable size for a single frog for like $10. I, I I Again, I don't know your circumstances or where you're looking. Secondly, even if they are expensive, taking that extra expense is something that you should be prepared to do when you get an animal. If you can't afford like a heat pad or to provide your pet with appropriate care. Getting into pet keeping is probably not something that you should do. And this is not to be like classist or anything or say that like, oh, the reptile hobby should only be open to people that have like a large amount of money. That's not true at all. You can you can keep reptiles for very cheap. If money gets in the way of you giving your frog or pet in general, just a, a good and healthy life, it's probably not something that you should get into. Your pet's life and your pet's well being should take precedence because this is a living thing that you're carrying for that has no choice other than to be cared for by you. Okay, this next one is super long and I'm gonna read it really quickly. <laughs> Hi, this might end up being a long read, but I really appreciate it. If someone could help me out a bit, I'm very new to reptiles. Recently, I had a friend where him and the boyfriend needed, uh, where him and his boyfriend needed have another caretaker for the frogs. I'm kind of 29 gallon UVB daytime and nighttime lighting systems with two thermometers to the bottom and top of the aquarium, a bunch of different climbing and hiding decorations, water filter, and three soaking areas. And four little frogs have been super adamant about the care for the past four days. So as of now, some of them don't seem to move very much. And other nocturnal, but some have gone 24 hours. And what it seems is there's one skinnier than the rest, and one hanging on the bottom during the day when it's cooler. I really crickets and mealworms and the calcium every other day. Although there's still a few left over improvements, feeding the cage, I keep paper towels at the bottom of their tank. I miss everything twice a day, even though I keep the lights on. There. Uh, oh my God. On we needed is the exact setup and the previous owners have the thermometers you should say about 63 degrees when I get up where I keep my room at about 71 when I sleep which is when I keep their lights on during the day the temperature never uh, passes 75 or so is there something wrong with both their behaviors staying up at the bottom not climbing not moving at times not croaking at night etc and I don't care for them they don't over soak I know there's a potential red flag I feel as though I've done a good amount of research for the little dudes I've been kept very keen on their health but I want to be absolutely positive but I hate to have something happen to the dudes that it could have been preventable I want to give them the best life possible thank you for reading if anyone get back to me to me in the world <sighs> <sighs> Hey, you're absolutely right. That was a very long read. But also, I appreciate all the care that you're taking into making sure that you're, in your words, little dudes are okay. Honestly, like, I... I your frogs not moving around is not exactly a sign of poor health. Frogs are not exactly the most active creatures. Like they don't move around a lot, even in the wild. And it seems like you've taken care of them pretty fine. I mean, the only thing that I would suggest is not leaving like food out overnight in the cage, especially crickets because they can bite and also crickets are disgusting and they are loud. But that, that doesn't seem to be causing any sort of issues here. Sorry, uh, I would probably talk to a frog expert about this, which is definitely not me. I'm just a guy that has frogs and other animals. All right, next question. Hey, I know it's been a couple months since this even got posted, but you are one of the places I rely on for White's Tree Frogs information, including some others. But I've been looking into getting one for about a year now, but I can't figure out where to get one as people have told me not to buy from PetSmart, which is the closet closest pet store that sells White's Tree Frogs to my location. So any recommendations, please help. Uh, first of all, don't rely on me for all your White's Tree Frog information. Uh, go to other people uh, and yeah, just get as many sources as possible. Because as people have pointed out, I am wrong about things sometimes. Times, but other times I'm not wrong. As far as where to buy uh, White's Tree Frogs, I got mine from PetSmart just because they were the clo it was the closest thing to me and the cheapest that I could find. You basically have to make the decision of whether or not you want to buy from PetSmart. If you really don't want to buy from PetSmart, you can go on places like Morph Market or you can just do a Google search like reptile stores near me. And if there's nothing there, you can buy stuff online. Online shipping, it's a little bit more expensive. It's usually like 30 to $50 depending on where you are, but it's totally safe and it's something that's done pretty much every day all around the world. So if you really don't want to buy from those chains, I would suggest just buying online from a reputable breeder. Also, you can get things from reptile shows. I know it's COVID, so there's no reptile shows really up right now, but when there are, you can go to reptile shows. Next question. Question about the food. Does it have to be alive? I'm not sure I'm comfortable with alive insects. Example, sad face alive cockroaches, worms, etc. If so, how do I figure that out? I'll figure it out for you. You have to feed them live insects. They just, they won't eat dead. I'm sorry. If, if you want frogs, you have to be comfortable feeding them live insects. If not, can't have a frog. And I said that to them. Follow up question. Thank you. Another question, if you don't mind, where do I find alive insects and how do I keep them, you know, alive? I appreciate your questions. There's crickets.
mealworms, and dubia roaches, all easily acquired at your local Petco PetSmart reptile shop or with some of the links down below. Uh, you can look up where to buy bugs online uh, because it's going to be different depending on where you are. By the way, if uh, you haven't subscribed, you should definitely do that. Uh -huh. Not a question, but here's something that was funny. You talk about them drying out, but you have one on your shoulder. Can we get a destroyed with facts and logics in the comments, please? Next question. Bonji, you have me confuzzled. You said you shouldn't use tap water or sink water for the water bowl. Then said you can use tap water. EXPLAIN! Also, what water is preferable to wet the hands with when handling? Uh-oh, someone didn't pay attention. No, I, I appreciate the question. I understand that, it, that it's confusing. Yeah, you shouldn't use tap water unless you condition it with something like Reptisafe or you let the chlorine evaporate. Generally, if you don't want to like risk it, I would suggest just using bottled spring water. That's usually the best thing to do. That's what I've used for my frogs and they have no issue with it and they're just fine. As far as wetting hands when handling, I just spray my hands with distilled water, but you can also use bottled spring water, just as long as it's not tap or chlorinated water, it's fine. All right, last question that I want to go over. Okay, I have a few questions. Can one frog live alone? Frogs can live alone, yes. Or would it be better to house them together? Is a 12 by 12 by 24 a suitable size for two frogs for long-term usage? I plan on purchasing a small X tall Exoterra, 12 by 12 by 24. Do you think this is a good size for two white tree frogs? How often do you clean the cage? I'm pretty sure you have to spot clean every day. How often would I do a full cage cleaning? I, I love the I always love the chaos in, in people's like tone when they're asking all these questions. Yeah, 12 by 12 by 24 is probably okay. It's a little small on the lengthwise. That that's something that I want to correct from my previous video where I said a 10 gallon tank is fine for two frogs and at the time my frogs were both fine in a 10 gallon um, but as of currently they've grown pretty large and a 10 gallon which is 12 by 12 by 18 is definitely way too small for them i haven't seen a 12 by 12 by 24 my assumption is that it's okay as long as you have like branches going all the way up to the top um, but i think something like an 18 by 18 by 24 or an 18 by 18 by 18 would probably be a little bit better and more spacious for them bigger the better obviously as far as how often do I clean the cage, uh, you're right, yeah, you should spot clean pretty much every day. You don't want poop to create bacteria in there because that'll get into your frog skin super easily. As far as a full cage cleaning, I've seen numerous different things about this. Some say you should do it like every month. Some say you should do it every couple weeks. Some say every few months. I don't fully sanitize all of the decorations just because I don't want any of the chemicals to get into their skin. But of course, there are other ways to do it. So I would heavily encourage you to do other independent research on that. People in the reptile community always like amuse me. I, I find it specifically funny that people are most outspoken about frog care and monitor lizard care. Monitor lizard care, the criticism of that I went over in, in another video. So if you haven't seen that, you should check that one out because I kind of go in depth about that. But frog like culture, I guess is like really interesting to me because at least in 2021, frog keeping, especially online is populated by people that otherwise aren't involved in other parts of the reptile community. Like they just got really into frogs because for some reason frogs are super popular right now. So they just become like like super, super experts on this one specific animal without having like interest or like experience with other animals. So they're like the equivalent I see of like single issue voters that only engage with the micro political if their candidate of choice engages with something like child trafficking or gun rights. And other than that, they just like can't answer any other question about politics, which again is not evaluative. It's not a bad thing, but it's just funny that like of all things that people for people to be super fervent about online is like tree frog, like like white tree frog. Frogs of all things, you know? Like really? Anyway, thanks for watching. This has been another frog video. I got a couple more videos coming as you'd notice that Athena's cage behind me is missing. Don't worry, she is okay. I'll have an update video coming on all of my reptiles very soon, so stay tuned for that. I'll see you hopefully in the next video. And if I don't, something terrible has happened to me.